Today, we're going to resume talking about how to use parentheses and brackets in Python. And specifically, we're going to talk about how to use curly braces. As you probably already know, Python curly braces are not used for delimiting code blocks or for establishing control flow. We use indentation for that. So we have uh, specific spacing rules that we use in Python to show, for example, where a function definition starts, where it ends, where a for loop starts and ends, so on and so forth. That said, curly braces are used in Python and they're used for four things. The first thing you're going to use curly braces for in Python is to create and use dictionaries. The second use for curly braces is for creating dictionary comprehensions or dict comprehensions, which are a close cousin of list comprehensions, which we talked about in the previous video. The third use of curly braces is for creating sets. And the fourth use of curly braces is for formatting strings. Let's go ahead and dive deeper into this and see some examples for each of these scenarios. Let's start by looking at how to use curly braces to create an empty dictionary. In this first cell here, I have the variable name empty underscore dict. I'm following this by an assignment, and then I'm using the empty curly braces, so open curly brace, closed curly brace, with nothing in between, to denote that I want to create an empty dictionary. So if I run the cell, what did Python do? It created an empty dictionary. I can check that by running the cell immediately underneath it, and I can see that empty underscore dict actually holds an empty dictionary, which Python denotes as an open curly brace followed by a closed curly brace. If you want to make doubly sure that's the case, you can also check the type of empty underscore dict, and it is a type dict, which is short for dictionary. There's, of course, another way to create a dictionary in Python, and that's by using the dict constructor. In this next line of code, I'm going to use the constructor to create an empty dictionary, just so you can see the second way of doing it. So I'm creating the second variable, which I'm calling empty underscore dict underscore two. I know I'm not very creative, but Stay with me. I'm following this by the assignment operator, the equal sign. And then dict, open parenthesis, cl close parenthesis, is how I call the dictionary constructor. So if I run this line of code, what do we have? The constructor ran, it created an empty dictionary, it stored it in the empty underscore dict underscore two variable. So now if I check inside this variable, there you go, I have an empty dictionary. Again, if you want to triple check, you can check the type of empty underscore dict underscore two and voila, that's of type dict, so dictionary. Now, what if I want to create a dictionary that already has elements in it, well, that shouldn't be too difficult. The elements in a dictionary are key value pairs. So each element in a dictionary consists of a key and a value. So there's a unique key and there's a value attached to it. Let's see an example of what that looks like. So I have here the variable name full underscore dict. It's a full dictionary. The assignment operator again. And inside the curly braces, which denotes dictionary in Python, I have two elements here. The first element is this first key value pair. The key of the first element is the string first underscore key. The value is the integer one. And the second key value pair in the dictionary has second underscore key as the key. So it's a string and it has the integer two as the value. So one very important thing, as you probably already know, but I'm going to mention it just in case, the keys in a Python dictionary need to be unique and they need to be immutable. All right, so if I run this line of code, my full underscore dict was created and now I can check that and I can see that this variable name contains the two key value pairs that I assigned to it earlier on. The second use of curly braces in Python is for creating dictionary comprehensions, also known as dict comprehensions. Dictionary comprehension is simply a shorthand of creating key value pairs and adding them into a dictionary. And the syntax is going to look very similar to the syntax of a list comprehension, which we saw in the previous video. So what is a dict comprehension and what do we actually use it for? So this line of code here contains a dict comprehension. So what am I going to do here? Of course, I'm going to create the variable name so that I can store this dict comprehension. And then I'm going to write the actual comprehension. We're going to put it inside curly braces because the end result is going to be a dictionary. And the actual comprehension here is going to look very similar to a smushed in for loop. Now inside this dict comprehension, the first thing that you're going to see is the key value pair. In this case, the key is the variable num. It's followed by a colon. And then the value of the key value pair is num divided by two. So basically for each num in a collection, I want to use that as a key. And I want to assign to that key the value of num divided by two. So the value is going to be half of the key. And I want to do that in a loop for each num within 
range five. What a dict comprehension is, is effectively a shorthand for creating key value pairs and putting them in a dictionary by going in a for loop. So by basically iterating over all of the values in a specific collection. In this case, I'm iterating over the values that are generated using this range function to which I gave the input five. So basically that would be the first five integers starting from zero. So if we run this line of code, what happens? The dict comprehension was created. It was stored in the dict underscore comp variable. So if I go and I look inside that variable, what do we have? We have a dictionary, right? Again, we can track here what happened when we ran the first line of code. We now have how many? We have one, two, three, four and five key value pairs in this dictionary as we expected. Why? Because we iterated in this for loop inside the dict comprehension over five values, right? So the first key is the integer zero. The first value is zero because zero divided by two is zero. The second key is the integer one. The second value is 0 0.5, so on and so forth, right? So up until four, why? Because range five is going to yield the integers zero, one, two, three and four, it's not going to yield five because that's the end of the iterator. Now, this video is not specifically about dictionary comprehensions, but I'm going to show you an unfurled version of what this dictionary comprehension shorthand stands for. And that should hopefully help you get a better understanding of it. If we were to not use this shorthand, which creates this dictionary in a single line of code, what would we do? We would do the following. So we're now in this cell that I highlighted here. And let's say that I'm just going to do this step by step, right? So the first step that I need to do is to create this empty dictionary, right? This is the dictionary in which I'm going to add each of the key value pairs as I create them. So I'm making this empty dictionary and I'm storing it inside this variable called dict underscore comp underscore equiv. This is the equivalent of a dictionary comprehension. Now, if we were to unfurl this entire dict comprehension here, what we would have to do is basically write the for loop first. So for num in range four and the action that we want to take, right? The code underneath that, like we normally would for a for loop. So dict underscore comp underscore equivalent open square bracket, closed square bracket. And in between the square brackets, we have the variable num because this is the same variable that we used here. So num is the variable that we used to keep track of where we are within the iteration. So this is how we're iterating over the keys that we are adding to this dictionary. And how do we select a value from a Python dictionary? We select it by using this square bracket notation. So open square bracket, close square bracket. And in between the square brackets, we are including the key for the value that we want to get. So basically for each of these keys, I want to add a value associated to that key that is the key divided by two. So the end result is exactly what's happening here. It's just written in a more long form way. Now, why would we want to write less code? Because we're lazy, right? We don't want to write that much code. So effectively, the dict comprehension is just a shorter way of writing this kind of code, which is incidentally something that you might find yourself writing a lot when you want to iterate over a collection or over a series and create a dictionary by manipulating those values. So the dict comprehension in short will just save you a bit of time. If we run this code here, what do we get? We get the same dictionary that's stored inside our dict underscore comp underscore equiv. And you can see here that it's exactly the same end result as we have up here after running the dict comprehension. The third use of curly braces in Python is for sets. Sets are a data type. They represent a collection of mutable, unique, and hashable values. In short, you can treat a set as a dictionary that contains only keys and no values. An important property of sets is that each of the value in a given set is going to be unique. For this reason, it's really important to keep track of what you put in a set, because if you end up adding duplicate values to a set, you're going to lose them. And in fact, a very common use of sets is to deduplicate sets of values. So you would put everything within a set in order to end up with just the unique values in that collection. Now, how do we create the set? We create the set using curly braces, same as with a dictionary, but instead of entering key value pairs, we just enter values. So just plain values separated by commas. So in this case, I created this variable called unique. And to this variable, I'm assigning a set that consists of five elements, the numbers from one through five. So if I run this line of code, let's see what got stored in the variable unique. And it's exactly what we expected. The numbers from 
1 through 5. They are all unique and they are now stored inside a set. If we want to double check the data type for the variable unique, we can see that it is indeed a set. Now to create an empty set, we can't use the simple open curly brace, close curly brace notation because we saw that's how we get a dictionary. That's how we get an empty dictionary. So instead, in order to create an empty set, we have to use the set constructor. Here's an example. So the variable empty underscore set is going to contain an empty set after we run this line of code. And to check, sure enough, we have an empty set in here. If we check the type, it's of type set, like we expected. The fourth and final use of curly braces in Python has to do with formatting strings. We have two different options when it comes to formatting strings. We can either use the format method and apply it to the string that we want to format, or we can use an F string. Let's look at the differences between the two approaches and how curly braces play into each one of them. In this first cell that I have highlighted here, I'm going to use the format method to format this string. So the string that I want to format is my name is name and I am age years old. Now I'm putting all of this inside a print function so that you can see the actual end result, but the main action in this case happens in here. So the first portion of this line of code is effectively the string that we want to format. So my name is name and I am age years old. You can tell that it's a string because it's contained within quotes. And to this string, we apply the format method, right? So format is a method of strings. And one thing you're going to notice inside the string is the fact that we put name and age inside curly braces. The reason why we want to put them inside curly braces is to denote the fact that these are simply placeholders. So when this print function actually executes, I don't want Python to show me the string as it is with these placeholders. Instead, I wanted to actually replace those placeholders with the actual values that I have for name and age. So I'm using curly braces in this case to denote the fact that these two things are simply placeholders. Then I'm going to use the format method to tell Python the actual values that I wanted to use to replace those placeholders. So in this case, I want name to be replaced with the string John and I want age to be replaced with the value 30. So if I run this line of code, what do I get? I get the string my name is John and I am 30 years old. All right, so what happened here, this placeholder name, which I put in between curly braces, got replaced with the string John and this placeholder age, which I also put between curly braces, got replaced with the value 30. And when the print function ran, it gave me this nice clean string, which contains exactly the values that I want without me having to put them directly in the string to begin with. So by using the format method, I was able to replace these placeholders that I created in the string with actual values. Now, the second way to format this string, which you may or may not prefer over the format method, is by using an F string. An F string is an alternative to the format method, and F strings are available in Python as of Python 3.6. So if you're running Python 3.6 or later, you'll be able to use F strings if you prefer this way of formatting strings. So what's the difference here? Because we don't have an actual method where we can place the values that we want to replace instead of our placeholders, like we did up here, we're actually going to write the values First, we're going to first specify that name is going to be replaced with value John, age is going to be replaced with the value 30. And then when I write the print function, what I write is effectively the exact same formulation that you saw above, right? So the string looks exactly the same. We're still using curly braces and we're using placeholders to tell Python where we want those values placed. The placeholders are still surrounded by curly braces, just like they were up top. But instead of using the format method that we used up here, what we're going to do is just put this F in front of the string. That's it. That's all there is. So by putting an F in front of the string, we're telling Python, hey, I want you to format the string such that you replace these placeholders, which I put in between curly braces, and I want you to replace them with whatever I put in the variables with the same name. So since name I defined as holding the value John, I want you to replace that inside the string and the same for age. If I run this code, basically the result I get is exactly what I got earlier when I used the format function. My name is John and I am 30 years old. So just a different method. If you're running Python, 3.6 or later, then this is available to you and you may or may not prefer it to using the format method because it's a bit clearer. It's not all in one line of code. It's a little cleaner as a presentation. All right, that's it for curly braces in Python. If you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that subscribe button and also the bell. That way you'll also be the first to know when the next video comes out. For even more in-depth tutorials about Python and other AI technologies, go ahead and check out our blog as well. That's going to be at litera.com slash blog. The link is going to be included in the description as well. Thanks for watching.